when all that you see are actors on your television singing off key. What savvy, well versed heroes can settle the score? Once more with TV. Welcome, speedsters and Kryptonians, to Once More with TV, a podcast celebrating TV musical episodes from the sublime to the subprime. And definitively ranking them using every theater's child's worst nightmare, math. <laughs> I'm your co-host, Liza Truchel, she, her, and I'm a Jeremy Jordan enthusiast. Ooh, and I'm your co-host, <laughs> Alex Kovnatsky, he, him, and I think the Harley Quinn show is the DC property that understands DC characters and villains more than anything else. That's my I 100% opinion. agree. 100% agree. This week, we watched season three, episode 17 of The Flash, entitled The Duet. And in the spirit of musical crossover episodes, we also have a very special guest joining us. You can catch her as Cersei in Epic, The Cersei Saga, which is streaming on Spotify and YouTube. She's an insanely talented singer, a fellow math enthusiast, and just a genuinely very kind person. Welcome to the show, Talia Sindel. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for that lovely intro, Alex. <laughs> of course, of course. We're talking about The Flash this week. Talia, what's your relationship with The Flash TV show? Yeah, so um, I think I watched it like back in college. Um, I think my roommate was into it and she was like, oh, you got to watch it. And um, yeah, and I feel like, okay, okay, because it was on the CW, right? Yeah, it was on the CW. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like, you know, CW shows can be like a certain way sometimes that's like, you know, mm -hmm. but um, but I feel like The Flash, um, especially the first two seasons were like so good. It's so good. Um, and so, yeah, I was really into it. I mean, you know, I've always really liked superhero shows and uh, that kind of thing. Yeah, for... For context, I don't know if you remember this, Talia, but when we were in college together, the <laughs> yeah, first time we I met was in an <laughs> the first time we met was in an acting class, and we were paired up for a scene, and we like scheduled a rehearsal room and everything. And then Talia came in; it was like Halloween time, dressed as Rogue from the X Men, and I was like, "Oh, this is this is my friend. This we're friends now." That's a very good like litmus test for meeting a person. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, what they dressed as for how long. But yeah, I feel like your roommate watching The Flash is like the platonic ideal way of experiencing The Flash. Mm -hmm. Like that's the way it's truly meant to be experienced because it's sort of the same way for me. I think like we all just had someone sort of on the fringe of our life was really into it. And I watched the first couple seasons too. They were really good. I wasn't watching at the point that this episode aired, but I did tune in for it. Cause it was like a big event yeah. and everybody was talking about it. Yeah. Um, totally. But yeah, essentially the same. I mean, I, I used to uh, really enjoy, I do think for all that, I totally agree. And Harley Quinn is the DC property that most understands the tone. I do think the CW shows generally for me come closer than the DC cinematic extended universe, whatever they want to call it. Uh, just because it's not so obsessed with being like Christopher Nolan. <laughs> it's yes. It's obsessed with being like overly grim, dark, and annoying. It's like a bit goofy. Like, this is a goofy ass episode of TV. <laughs> really goofy. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah, so same as as you both as well. Um, I think I actually I was I was an Arrow fan when that was coming out, and then when the Flash spun off, I was like, oh, this is a better version of the show I'm watching. <laughs> Fell off of Arrow and kept watching the Flash, and I I did watch this episode live, but I think it was about the time when I started tuning out. I think maybe I finished season three and didn't watch season four. I think I was the same. Yeah. I think they have like eight seasons now I or know. something like that. And Tom Felton yeah. was That's like crazy. on it. And I was like, oh man, I love what? Tom Felton. Insane. At least I think. Insane. Draco I Malfoy was on this show. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that is wild. Guys, there was a lot of people in this episode. Yeah, this is full of guest stars. <laughs> One after the other. Every two minutes, I've got an all caps note of a name that I'm very excited about. <laughs> yeah, so the, the synopsis of this episode, really succinct, is the music meister sends Supergirl and The Flash to a world where life is a musical, and the only way to escape is to sing and dance. Brilliant synopsis there. That's exactly what it Brilliant. was. Brilliant. Lovely and That's concise. Exactly what it is. Um, I just kind of want to run through all of the people who are in this episode and all the properties that they were in, 
So Grant Gustin, who's Barry Allen, was in Glee, obviously, but he was also in West Side Story on Broadway. Melissa Benoist, who's Supergirl, was also in Glee and also in Beautiful the Carol King musical. Jesse L. Martin, who is Joe West, um, was Collins and Rent, famously in the movie and in the musical. Uh, Jeremy God, Jordan. We love a bass. <laughs> exactly. <right. laughs> so, one of the best bass singers in all of musical Iconic. theater. Iconic. Iconic. Absolute, absolute uh, legend. I'll cover yeah. you reprise is, is everything. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> um, Jeremy Jordan, obviously, we know and love. Mm. Darren Chris also as well in this. Um, John Barrowman, who I didn't even know did theater. I it makes so much John sense, Barrowman. though. It does. It's offensive to me that you didn't know he did theater, but okay. <laughs> um, his rendition of Marry Me a Little is like one of my comfort Whoa. YouTube deep dives Ooh. from like when I was like 15. Because <laughs> he was on... Uh, he was on Doctor Who, yeah. which is where I first mm-hmm. experienced him, right? Yeah. And then uh, I had a friend who was, like, obsessed, or a friend's older sister. You know, when you your friend's older sister's obsessions, I think, like, define what you know at age 13. Anyway, but she showed me that, and I've watched it ever since. <laughs> Amazing. Um, shout out, Grace. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> um the list doesn't end there. Victor Garber, who plays Martin Stein, uh, was also in Sweeney um, and in Hello, Dolly and a bunch of other stuff on Broadway back in the day. Um, and Cisco, Carlos Valdez, uh, was in Jersey Boys and at once. I had no idea about that. Oh, I didn't know that at all. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I, I looked that up, too. I couldn't believe it. It's amazing. <laughs> it's insane. Apparently, fans had been pushing for a musical episode ever since The Flash literally started because they were like, all these people are in theater. We got to do it. Yeah, hello. It's um, extremely stacked as guests go. <laughs> extremely stacked. And one little fun fact that I didn't know as well, the guy who plays Cisco, Carlos Valdez, Darren Chris, Pasek and Paul, they all went to U-Mish together like the same year. Whoa. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's so they're all buds. <laughs> Musical theater conspiracy. Yes. Yes. (laughs) The conspiracy is to infiltrate superhero shows. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Anyway, let's get into the episode a little bit, yeah? Yeah. Absolutely. We start with with Barry kind of uh, watching Singing in the Rain and, uh, like, talking about how musicals make everything better. I think we can all agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. And none of us are immune to Gene Kelly. I think sometimes we, I don't know, just because of how ubiquitous that movie is, we all forget how goddamn charming Gene Kelly is. When you watch that movie, wow. Wow. Million dollar smile, that one. Yeah. I actually saw Singing in the Rain really late. I saw it like maybe a year or two ago for the first time. Oh, wow. Um, Wow. It was amazing. I was like, oh, okay, I get it. (laughs) This is awesome. (laughs) Yeah, that actually holds up. Oh, yeah, right? Yeah, it holds up in a, in a way that you don't think, like, studio musicals are really gonna... I never think studio musicals are gonna do it for me, and then they always do, so what am I saying? Something so magic about them. Yeah, I feel like my friends did a production of Singing in the Rain back, like, in middle school or something, and, like, we all, like, watch the movie together, so it's just been ages, so I, I am due for a rewatch, for sure. It holds up. Yeah. I also think it's a really good choice. They obviously make a lot of references to movie musicals, but um, Singing in the Rain, I think, is especially good choice for Barry Allen as a person. Like, he kind of exudes that positivity, but also as someone who is very fast, would love a show that has a bunch of dance, <laughs> dance numbers and tap numbers. Like, that makes sense in my head, and yes. I think it's a great choice. <laughs> There's a bunch of plot stuff that happens. I kind of want to get into the songs. They get thrust into this uh, musical world from Darren Chris just popping up and uh, I guess like doing weird things with his eyes to put him in a musical. Yeah, I guess so. I just like to think it's the effect of Darren Chris being around. Yes. <laughs> you yes. know, <laughs> we it makes you want to sing and dance. Yeah, yes. we've all we all like watched Star Kid at impressionable ages in our lives, mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, yeah, no, I just like to think that it's his sort of area of effect. Yeah, um, yeah, his area of effect spell, a hundred percent. Yeah, sorry, that's like <laughs> that's straight up a Dungeons and Dragons term. Different hey, nerd thing. Here. I'll keep that separate. Um, <laughs> but but uh, we we step into this musical world. It's like nineteen. 19- 
20s? It's a of? very past like past, is yes. what I would say. Yeah. Everyone's it's wearing nice suits and, and hats. From before. <laughs> yeah. It's art deco, but it's also the 40s. It's the 50s. It's the past. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Supergirl starts singing Moon River, and that's our first song in this episode. I'm curious to hear what you guys thought about that. I thought she sounded so lovely and I love how she performed it. I loved her dress and she was just, it was Mm -hmm. so sweet. And I forgot about like how great of a song Moon River is. And I'm like, I want to add that to my rep. (laughs) 100%. It's a great song. Yeah. It's really fun. I think Melissa Benoit, it really suits her voice. It's, um, it felt really comfortable for her. She was having fun with it. She's putting a little bit of sauce on it. Not too much, but a little making it her own enough. I thought it was a lovely, lovely little performance. And it's fun midway through when she notices Barry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> my Huckleberry friend, no, yeah. yeah. I didn't mm-hmm. catch I thought... that. <laughs> it's real cute. Um, yeah, I also love that Barry just kind of is about to do something about it, and then he's like, oh, she's singing. Ah, oh, I'm just going to listen to this for a little bit and be enchanted. Classic. Um, Consistently in the episode, Barry is just excited that people are singing and dancing in a way that was very sweet to watch. I think Grant Gustin is, like, such a great choice for this character, yes. but he... There's a certain, like, very boyish joy about him where, like, when people start singing and dancing, he just has to, he has to sit down and watch here. He wants to join in. He, like, is, he finds it so infectious <laughs> in a way that I thought was really charming. <laughs> he gives a lot of good musical theater boy. That's for sure. Oh, mm-hmm. yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, I thought the arrangement was really nice. I love her, you know, having her little Audrey Hepburn moment. Um <laughs> And uh, yeah, I, I throughout this whole episode, even though we have a lot of songs that aren't original songs, um, mm-hmm. the arrangements feel completely their own in a way that's nice. Not in a way that's like distracting, but in a way that is just uh, thought out. And I, I just wanted to shout that out a little bit too. Blake Neely is the guy who does the composition for this episode. And I think he also does... Uh, it regularly for the show and I think he really just did a great job with it and and with other songs as well too okay Blake okay Blake let's go (laughs) do your thing man yeah I think it's nice they feel tied together even though some are original and some aren't and I think that's pretty tough to do it's tough to take an existing song and make it sound (laughs) cohesive with songs that you are making up because we do get Rachel Bloom Mm -hmm. to come in and write songs Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and so it's hard to make them all feel like they're of a world together and i think he does a really good job you never really notice yeah oh my god after the song supergirl and barry they're like talking about like they're excited that the other person is real because there are all these versions of their friends wandering around who are just figments of their (laughs) like shared imagination (laughs) right and the way that they described Darren Chris to each other is that he had a red handkerchief as if that was <laughs> the, the most... most standout thing. <laughs> That was such a crazy way to describe a human man. Being like, he had a red pocket square? I know. Like, no. It was so odd. It really threw me. I didn't get that at all. It's so funny. It's also worth mentioning that Music Meister is a real DC villain. Like, famously a Batman villain. Really? um, Which is, yeah, it's super fun. Um, oh my god! Very campy. I think he was in the animated series. I think that he might is have in been... the he is in Batman: The Brave and the Bold, and I think that's actually an episode we probably have to yes. cover on this podcast. Yeah, no, it definitely is. <laughs> it definitely is. But it, then it was odd because he said that he created this world for them to be in out of their own consciousness. Is conch conchai? That's nothing. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but he creates it out of their shared like subconscious or whatever. And he says that it could have been like a war movie or a sci-fi or something else. And I'm like, your name is Music Meister. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't it have been a musical? I thought that was really odd. That was confusing to me, knowing who Music Meister is. Maybe he meant like the <laughs> genre of musical. <laughs> yeah, it could have been. I guess he does say space opera. Yeah, right. Like, this could have mm. been. Yeah, I wonder if it could have been. Is there a war musical? Can I know if you think of a war musical? <laughs> it's like Miss Saigon, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> you know. It's the Miss Saigon, yeah. I guess I, you're right. <laughs> I think Music Meister thinks every movie is a musical. That actually could be true for him. <laughs> 
I think to Barry's uh, Singing in the Rain, Kara, Supergirl's movie musical reference is Wizard of Oz. And I feel a little bit less connected to that. I feel like she just keeps making Wizard of Oz references. Right. Um, and I don't really see the connection as much. I guess she is like a stranger in a new world, yeah. I guess. She right? gives That's Dorothy vibes. Like, okay. Yeah. Yeah, sure. There's something sort of like doe eyed and sweet about the performance she's giving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she is mostly connecting to it through goofs, but that's fine. That's how I interact with the world around me. (laughs) So (laughs) I can't really fault someone else for it. (laughs) Darren Chris shows up after her number and says you're a little flat in places, which I thought was hilarious because I don't think that's true. At least not in my (laughs) listening. I wrote that down. I was like, Darren Chris. No, she sounded great. <laughs> like, that's our job, Darren Chris, to decide if she's flat in places or not. Her pitch was great. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you, sir? He is a villain, though. So that's true. But is um, he? <laughs> is he? That's it. Oh, we have to get into that. I, yes. I'm sorry. He robs a bank and we just let him go in a way that is crazy to me <laughs> because he was teaching us a lesson and therefore that's yeah. fine. <laughs> like I, he was stealing their powers at one point and oh. it was just for fun. Yeah. Like, I just they got don't very really confused. That. Like just because it ended up okay, they were just like, okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, because he was he he was also in like the Supergirl episode? He was in the Supergirl episode for a second, but like halfway through this episode, they're like their powers right. are being drained, and then they cut to Music Meister robbing a bank with their powers, and then we don't see anything of that ever again. <laughs> yeah, and then Cisco and uses Martian Manhunter and Kid Flash to punch him twice. (laughs) Very convoluted punches happen and we foil him. But yeah, at the end, we just like let him go because even the stealing of the powers and the robbing of the bank consisted of teaching us a lesson about emotional availability. (laughs) And we're all so grateful that we're more emotionally available to each other that he can just go. It's really odd to me. I was very thrown by that. He's like, he's doing good work. So he has to support his career somehow, <laughs> yeah. you know? Like, right. drain, exactly, drain a little, exactly. just a little bit of powers. Just steal, just like, a a little from a small bank, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, we are... We love an anti-capitalist king. Exactly. Right. There we go. <laughs> Who teaches um, cis head white men to be more honest and emotionally available <laughs> with each other. You know? Yes. Like, we're huge on that. So I guess we stand. I don't know. I think I he's confused. a hero. I think he's firmly in the hero category. <laughs> I need I need a Except spin-off. for when he tells... Yeah. Except for when he tells Melissa the noise that she's flat. I, yeah. And in mm-hmm. that moment... He is a villain. Yes. That's not true. It's just rude. Crossing the line. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to get into our next song, uh, Put a Little Love in Your Heart. Again, I think this is a really great arrangement. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Yeah, no, I, I enjoyed it. I think my favorite part was all the dancing. The choreo yes. was just so delightful. So great. I love the lighting. And I love, yeah, I just how I liked how everything looked. And the song was fun, um, but you know, I um, I'm always going to love like the the more musical theater songs or the original songs like mm-hmm. more. Just, but I, I enjoyed it. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's that thrill of like hearing a song you know in a new mm-hmm. fun way, and also it's kind of like we love like. Um, I'm just speaking for Alex at this point. But generally, <laughs> we love when you use your whole cast. Yes. We're yes. always like begging these shows to use their whole cast because the, because there's something very joyful about like all of your friends joining in in a musical number, you know? So I think that this song captures that really well. There's some fun choreo. All of our friends get a little line in or two, you know, like John Barrowman's here, Jeremy mm-hmm. Jordan, it's our so pianist is here. <laughs> Doing the thickest Newsies ass accent oh, I've yes. ever heard. The accents yes. everywhere. <laughs> so good. Oh, everyone is clearly having so much fun with these characters. Yes. 100%. <laughs> and that's huge. That's 100%. huge. Yeah. It's infectious. I don't care how accurate the accents are at all. I love that they're doing no. it. The less like, accurate, the better, honestly. <laughs> yeah, a little yeah. bit. A little bit. <laughs> I just want them to ham it up and Jeremy Jordan just 
absolutely read the brief and was like, I'm going to do the broadest insane accent anyone's ever heard. Yeah. And I ate it up, ate it up. Speaking of, everyone ate in this. Yes. Like, it's worth mentioning mm-hmm. that we love the singing, we love the dancing, but it was also very good yeah. that they were, you know, they were all doing it super well. I was surprised that Cisco was so good at singing and dancing. I was so it excited. It surprised the hell out of me. Yeah. Like, okay, triple <laughs> yeah. threads everywhere. Everywhere you look. Well, yeah, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. It was pros. It was a bunch of pros doing it. I mean, yeah, you never get that in these. It was very fun. Yeah, yeah there was a crazy moment very early into the song where, like, they key change maybe, like, 10 measures into the song into Jeremy Jordan just like riffing into his verse and I was like oh my god why isn't every musical episode this level of talent (laughs) it's crazy it's amazing yeah completely insane yeah loved it I have to say though um like so I I did really enjoy it everyone's so good but it's so exciting when a show does like a musical theater episode and there's a lot of like normal non-singers on it and they still Mm -hmm. sing that is so exciting to me. And it's like, look, you just, you, they gave you that song and you, you sung it and you did your best. And I just love that as well. Like that is so, ex- so it's like, okay, fine. Everyone can sing. Amazing. You know, but, um, no, yeah. you're absolutely right. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Commitment is so much more important yeah. than singing talent to mm-hmm. me. <laughs> if you just go for it it's a bonus if they're really good at singing it's a fun treat when everybody's able to sing like this but if someone just fucking tries i'm so here for that i'm so here for people just giving it their all even if it's not their wheelhouse it happens to be that we're in everyone's wheelhouse today (laughs) (laughs) yeah and i would like feel bad because like the cast is so stacked so that probably makes it harder for like someone who's like not super professionally trained as a singer Mm -hmm. to be like oh yeah time for my solo after all of these broadway people (laughs) like that that yeah that would probably be harder but you know (laughs) yeah everyone who sings does have experience and i i think this is a crazy thing to say but i agree with you completely talia that like it almost gives it this level of polish that puts it in a different category that makes it feel like it's not the usual kind of musical episode that we're seeing but it feels so harsh to give that as a criticism it's just it's just i i like if iris would have sung and been like less good than everyone else that would have been kind of exciting it would have been so exciting yeah it's almost like it's so polished and it makes no sense, but it's almost a little like, you know, quote, like less impressive Mm -hmm. just a little bit because like, I'm like, Oh great. This is like, yeah, a professional product. And I'm, I'm kind of just expecting this level of excellence. And so I'm not like wowed as much, I guess. A hundred percent agree. A hundred percent agree. Especially because actually I was really thinking during this that, Iris has one of the bigger emotional journeys of anybody Mm -hmm. in this episode. And because she doesn't sing, it feels like she gets sort of sidelined, even though she's going through quite a lot over the course of this episode. Um, And, you know, at the end, of course, like Barry sings to her. But I was really hoping for that that would be a duet. Mm -hmm. Like that could have, should have been a duet, in my opinion. It is called the duet, right? I know. And it ends on a solo? Are you joking? (laughs) And the song also sounds like it's written to be a duet. There's some like echoing lines that like Barry sings and it just, it feels like, yeah. But that's okay also because like, you know, it's a lot to have to like hold your own and sing when you don't feel confident about it, like especially around all these amazing people. So like, you know, it's fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I think that's a great point. It it very could have been a duet and maybe uh, the actress who played Iris didn't want to do it. Um, you know, who knows? There could be a who number knows, of reasons yeah. why that didn't end up happening. But I, I agree with you completely there. Um, kind of on, on a different note, speaking of duets, I do kind of think the thing that won me over the most on this episode was just Barry and Kara's like chemistry. I think they're so good together as friends. Oh my gosh, um, yes. They have the part where they're kicking down the door and <laughs> she's like, oh, wait, I want to kick down the door. He's like, I didn't mean a gender thing. Like, we can both do it. <laughs> I love that moment. <laughs> That was so funny. He's such good. a good boy. Mm-hmm. I think like the thing about Barry that is so great is he's just like a nice 
boy. <laughs> he never means to hurt anyone. He just wants to get through his day. <laughs> and they have really great like musical theater back and forth things. Like he's like, this is just like West Side Story. And she's like, I was thinking fantastic. It's like, I'm like, great. You're really catering to your audience. I love it. Thank you for this. No, they're adorable together, actually. They have such great chemistry. They're a little asides. They're like, quote unquote, acting at Victor Garber and stuff <laughs> is all really charming and fun. Like yeah. it it really um, they're quite endearing in this. Oh, totally. And like, I love Barry and Iris, like Barry and Iris, like, mm -hmm. you know, yes. But like Barry and Kara would also be so cute. I was just like, no, I know I'm not supposed to ship them, but I ship them a little bit in this episode. Because they're just yeah, really good. I, I yeah, yeah they're like, oh, we'll just be single together. And I was like, hey. <laughs> 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 yeah. You don't know this, Talia, but anytime Liza and I watch a show together that has any teens in it, we're always like, are those teens in love? <laughs> could, could those teens be in love? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I thought the dialogue was actually pretty good and pretty snappy in this episode for the most part. Like, there were some things that, that didn't uh, hit as well, but I think they had some good jokes. Mm -hmm. I love, again, the part when Barry finds out that Iris's dad and Martin are, uh, like, a couple. And Two he's dad. like, dads? Dad? And they're like, you got a problem with it? And he's like, no, I love musicals. Like, that's very, very fun. <laughs> No. <laughs> yeah, his response, I love musicals. Like, that's like. <laughs> that's LGBT yeah, that representation there. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. An ally. The A is for ally. <laughs> I just, I just want like that to happen in some other sort of context where like someone's like, whoa, are you like not okay with like this, you know, gay couple? And then their response is just, no, I, I love musicals. Like, <laughs> just, <laughs> Please, man. out of nowhere. I'm on your side. <laughs> That says it all. <laughs> the next song that comes up is uh, More I Cannot Wish You, which is from Guys and Dolls. It's not in the movie, but it's in the musical. Somebody sings it to Sarah Brown. I don't remember who. But uh, yeah, this is uh, Jesse L. Martin and Victor Garber and um, John Barrowman just like Killing being dads who are dads. singing. <laughs> just three dads. <laughs> I wrote in my notes here, goddamn Jesse L. Martin is just such a good singer. So, so lovely. What a treat. And yeah, I for I forget about the song from Guys and Dolls. Like I just I don't remember that it's in that one as much. And um it's such a nice song. It's so good. Mm -hmm. It's very sweet. Yeah. It's a very sweet song. And I, I do love the songs that they chose for their found music for this. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like they are a little bit obscure, but popular enough that some people might know it and still hearkening back to a certain era of musical theater yes. that this is kind of like taking place in, sort of. Yeah, I think this song maybe was the weakest one for me, but I still think it was pretty nice. Yeah, I suppose like uh, maybe not as dynamic, not as much happening, but yeah, still, still so fun to hear the three of them sing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just three dads belting. I mean, you don't really get that. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> yeah, I, we have a lot of dad trios going around. <laughs> I do wish there was a little bit less belting. Like, I wish yeah, there was like the, a the little bit more on blending. Top of each other was actually a little intense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could have used a little bit of harmonies, but yeah, again, it didn't I, feel like we were all in the room together. It felt like we all recorded solo. <laughs> <laughs> and then some poor sound guy was forced to sit there like, this isn't going to work, but I'm just going to layer it. <laughs> How did you guys feel about the like immediate heel turn after that song, though? Like, we're going to war. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of, I thought it was, I don't know. I always love a, an aggressive tone shift. I always mm. find them funny. So I found it a good goof. Uh, it also, I think, came really hot on the heels of, of course, Barry saying, wow, everything's easy and useful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and so I like that sort of like immediate proof that that was not true and that Barry's a dummy. <laughs> um, this song is odd to me because our two characters who are having like emotional breakthroughs are two quote unquote real people, Barry and Kara, mm -hmm. are not singing in it but because they are watching people have emotional breakthroughs, they're supposed to understand something about their own stories, right? So Kara is supposed to understand that um, maybe this guy like mon -El, didn't tell her something because he was worried about how she'd react because that's what's happening with 
like Iris and her two dads in that mm-hmm. scene. And Barry's maybe supposed to realize that sometimes looking out for someone without consulting them about it, it's not something you can do without or for them. You know, you can't, you have to like communicate. And that's what, you know, Iris is supposed to learn from her dads. And I guess Kara is supposed to realize, yeah, they're all supposed to realize things, but since they're not the ones doing the singing, I think that gets completely lost. Like, I'm literally mm-hmm. struggling to explain it, obviously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I don't think it's clear. And I kind of didn't love that their emotional realizations that affect the real plot of the real story are completely buried in this number where they don't do anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then right after the number, like, they're like, oh, we're going to war. And it's like, undoes everything, you know, kind of. Yeah. Totally, <laughs> right. So I felt like that was a bit of a disconnect for me. Like, there were supposed to be these things that they take away with them back into the real world. Like, this is arguably the moment where Barry realizes that he should go be honest with Iris and, like, propose to her because he loves her, not because he's trying to protect her. I don't know what was going on, but that seems to be the, that seems to be the lesson. And this might be the only place where he's supposed to learn it. Um, and Darren Chris's uh, purported thing is that he's teaching us lessons. <laughs> so this should be the most important moment in the musical. And instead, it's completely lost, I think. It's lost and it's also the next song that comes up is completely separate from mm-hmm. what the progress has been so far. I'm not complaining about the next song that comes up, which is Super Friend. Um, I which love I this song. Want to talk about a bunch? <laughs> That's part. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go in. Tell me, tell me what you think. I just love tap dancing on TV. I don't think we do it enough. It's yes. such a tap is one of those. I first of all, I say this to someone who's fucking cannot tap, <laughs> but tap is one of those things that music theater kids learn because you like have to because you're doing your production of guys and dolls or your production of anything goes or whatever and then in your adult life you never get to tap that is like the most useless skill in the history of dance skills god forbid you live in an apartment and you're just gonna ruin your down person <laughs> your neighbor's life right and so there's something so joyful about when you ask adult actors to tap because they're like thank god it was for something <laughs> and it always feels like such a payoff for them so yeah i love tap dance yeah and it's just like i, I mean especially like if you don't know about like all of all of the actors' talents, you know, just like seeing this number and have them like pull out another trick that they can both do Mm -hmm. is thrilling. It's like, okay, yes. Um, So yeah, that was very, very exciting. And and they just looked like they were having so much fun too, like genuine fun. Yeah, so I loved that. Yeah, the tapping is really, really remarkable. Uh, I think Grant Gustin especially is just so good at it. It makes it look so flawless. But... Yeah, it, it this song is so obviously written by Rachel Bloom. It's like offensively <laughs> obvious that she wrote this. She apparently uh, heard that they were doing a musical episode, immediately wrote this song and tried to pitch it to uh, the creators of the show immediately being like, I need I need the song to be in the episode. And they were like, yeah, of course. This, this is great. That is so cool. A hero of our time. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. We're big fans. (laughs) I screamed at super, it has a double meaning friend, because that is just the (laughs) most Rachel Bloom crazy ex-girlfriend thing (laughs) ever. I liked the, there was one rhyme where it was like, end ship, friendship, you know, like, (laughs) whoa. (laughs) Lyric. It's really sweet. There's a joke about how, you know, uh, she's like, well, if we need to fix something, you can just go back in time. And he's like, I'm actually not supposed to do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <it's> <laughs> so <laughs> love that. Something the Flash gets in trouble for a lot. <laughs> also, we just love supportive friendships. Yes. I'm all about gassing up your friends. Yeah. People should do it more aggressively and more often. That's what friends are for. So I think it's just a very cute little thing to be like, you need a compliment? Here's 10. Mm-hmm. You're amazing. Mm-hmm. I just thought that was really sweet and what a great basis for a song. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the uh friendship thing also that rhyme is maybe a call to anything goes as friendship. Oh my um, gosh. Okay, there we go. Okay. Ooh, wow. Which also yeah. feels in the era of yeah. this episode. Um yeah, but yeah, there, there's so many just dumb horseshit bits where I'm like, this, I need to rewatch Crazy Ex-Girlfriend now because this is so, hitting so hard. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's those quick, quick jokes. I mean, Rachel Bloom lyrics and like uh musical arrangements themselves are very witty and very she'll sneak about like eight jokes into one line in a way that mm-hmm. you think is probably impossible. <laughs> so truly amazing. Um yeah, and a great fit for the tone of this show and the tone of this episode. Yeah. I would say. Just like really um for this to be the original song, it's like really a standout number. It was mm-hmm. very fun. Yeah, my only note is that I wish it was a bit longer. That's that's all I want. But uh, yeah, that's that's not a bad. Twelve verses, three bridges, <laughs> more. <laughs> it's it's so good. It's so good. But yeah, then we kind of have the uh, I guess climax slash resolution of the episode. Um, it all kind of happens pretty quickly. But the, Cisco gets Barry and Kara's partners to vibe into the like musical vibe. world yeah it's just like <laughs> that's that's crazy, his superpower yeah. that's his name it's vibe it's vibing. <laughs> yeah that's literally it <laughs> as a side note i used to get mistaken for cisco constantly back when my hair was longer and i didn't have a beard yeah. um, that reads for you no yeah yeah, that makes yeah. Sense. i feel like even like when i was watching the flash i was like he just you i mean he, it's like, i feel like in so many ways he reminds me of you like because you guys do look similar <laughs> but also just like how he is is very like I, I feel like he's very sweet yeah. and like really supportive and he's funny and he's like secretly super not secretly but he's just like super intelligent like mm-hmm. he can always yes he's always like really I don't those are all things I associate with Alex oh, yes exactly <laughs> so sweet yeah guys. yeah Thank you. and like of course he does musical theater too so it's like that lines up as well yeah. like so I yeah. don't know maybe you are him mm. yeah there was some Cisco Alex synergy yes, yes. you guys Amazing. are vibing <laughs> Ooh, no, I, I hate it. I, I hate it. it. I'm no, sorry. It was good. We're keeping it. We're keeping it. It's making the cut. Well, everyone will know how funny I am. <laughs> A tragedy. Here's here's my question. Here's my bullshit question, though. If they are vibing into this musical theater world. What are they doing back at Star Labs that they end up kissing I, them back to life? I, that bothered me. That bothered me a lot. <laughs> it's almost like it didn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> <laughs> That's musical theater for you. Hey. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I mean, we solve things with a kiss. You're allowed to do that in yes. musicals. Yeah, true love kiss. And we love it. Yeah, it's you're always allowed to do it. But there was... Yeah, a distinct disconnect on, wait, what? (laughs) Shouldn't they be comatose? Because Barry and Kara are comatose, but they didn't have enough control over their bodies to kiss them in real life at the same time. I was was a little uh, thrown by that. It was all confusing, Mm -hmm. but that i mean that resolved that and we just have uh darren chris being like well i taught you a lesson goodbye (laughs) yeah he just fucking yeets out of there he's like "Mm, aren't you glad you learned a lesson (laughs) it was very strange um i did enjoy uh cisco's delivery of man how did you get out of that cell (laughs) we just put him in a cell it's like, are you fucking kidding me, dude? I, I um, also love the delivery of uh, when Barry's like, well, I had another really great singer with me, and Wells being like, thank you, yeah. Barry. <laughs> <laughs> it's also very good. Um, good stuff. But then we have the final number of this episode, which is also an original number. This is the Pasek and Paul one, which also was offensively a Pasek and Paul song. Yes. Um, yeah. They you know, are the Dear Evan Hansen people, La La Land, all those things. Um, And it sounded exactly like that. It sounded like those. Yeah. And it was lovely. They have a very distinct flavor. No, it was Mm -hmm. super nice. Again, did kind of lend itself to being a duet. Yes. (laughs) This is kind of a little weird for a final solo number, but that's okay. Grant Gustin sounded lovely Mm -hmm. on it. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't really have any complaints about that song i thought it was very sweet yeah Um, it felt so romantic and then he pulls mm -hmm. out the ring at the end and like her like reaction was so sweet and i was like oh like i'm getting emotional it was so nice yeah and i they have this tendency to write songs that at first glance i'm like this is sleepy and boring and then i'm like no that melody is actually really pretty yeah. and that actually sounds really really nice and that falsetto in that moment that's a really great choice um i i once had a friend describe dear evan hansen as like 
a perfect, perfect musical that like maybe doesn't take as big of swings. And that's why I don't like it. You know, like it's like it's like the similar kind of polish thing. Everything feels just like so, so good that it's maybe not quite as good as other things that I like more. Interesting. Yeah. I remember Dear Evan Hansen was playing next door to um, the Great Comet of 1812. Yeah, exactly. And I felt like it was such an interesting dichotomy of people. Wow. And I was in the 1812 line, I will say. <laughs> yeah, like, cool. I love a rough around the edges, like weird sort of thing. And Dear Evan Hansen, also, I mean, it's worth just noting that maybe a perfect score, possibly one of the worst books I've yes, ever... Yes, 100%. Like, that is an intolerable <laughs> script. I mean, it's just the worst. Mm. Paul and Basic, actually, to me, pretty consistently, I love their music and absolutely hate what they're write music, writing music about if they're allowed to, like, pick their own subjects. <laughs> like, I just don't think... I mean, La La Land, A White Man Saves Jazz. The music's great, <laughs> but A White Man Has Saved Jazz. <laughs> Greatest Showmen were just, like, glorifying a man who exploited, like, disabled people. So that's... It was also so funny to me. So my partner had uh, had seen that and was showing it to me and um, was not understanding why I was being so critical of, <laughs> like, Barnum. And they, But apparently, like, in the UK... Like, they didn't know he was a real person. <laughs> like, no one in his family <laughs> knew that this was based on a real man, and they all thought I just, like, hated Hugh Jackman. <laughs> They're like, why are you being so rude? And I was like, this was a real man of Barnum and Bailey. Did people not know this? <laughs> that is like, so funny. Yeah, and they were like, oh, your response makes a lot more sense. But again, like great music. I don't like the subject they chose. So mm-hmm. when they're brought in for things like this or like when they're brought in on Only Murders in the Building, mm-hmm. I get to enjoy Paul and Pasek more, mm-hmm. I think. But yeah, I mean, it's a nice song. I will say, even if Iris wasn't going to be a part of the duet, I was actually really disappointed Supergirl wasn't a part of the duet on this. I know she's kind of gone back to her own world slash show, but I think you could have just wrapped it up also with her. It felt like she kind of went off into wherever she is, and we just didn't mm-hmm. hear from her again. And again, I know she has her own show, <laughs> so I'm sure things yeah. were wrapped up on her own show. But I kind of wanted them to end together here, because she was such a huge part of it up until this point, and then she just disappeared. I didn't mind it so much because, for one thing, I think this is Barry's show, and so he like should kind of have the last song. And if it is going to be a duet, it makes more sense for it to be with Iris. And I think Barry's stakes are a little bit higher than Kara's stakes of her mm-hmm, relationship mm-hmm. generally. That's true. But yeah. the second thing, which is a fun fact, um, Kara sings this song at Barry and Iris's wedding in a later episode. Uh, while Iris is walking down the aisle, it's really sweet. No. That's really cute. Yeah, it's really cute. <laughs> that is such a nice throwback. That's very sweet. She's wearing her little Clark Kent glasses because she also has to be disguised. It's very, it's very sweet. <laughs> oh, my that's gosh. very cute. I just want to like jump to that, that episode. Which season is that in? I don't know, but th- there's a clip on YouTube that you can uh, see. Yeah, okay, that might be a little easier. But yeah, that's that's the episode. Yeah. <laughs> um, any any last thoughts about anything before we go into the scoring? It was such a roller coaster. <laughs> I I will say I just kind of wished there had been more songs. Yes. Like there were a lot of, mm-hmm. um, the, especially as we talk about the plot with like Darren Chris robbing that bank <laughs> felt so superfluous. I was like, why am I watching this? <laughs> like, why can't I just be in the world of the musical yeah, right now? So I like watched the episode twice and I actually don't remember that part. So that must be, like, <laughs> how did I miss that? I, like... Yeah, when you first mentioned, oh, and he's robbing a bank, we let him go. I thought you meant like as like a metaphor or something. <laughs> you talking about it. Like, what? That, how did I miss that? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty telling. I also on the on the soundtrack, there's a song called "Meet the Music Meister," which I thought would be a song. Like I was doing the research before watching the episode, and I had that queued up, waiting for Darren Chris to have a song 
but it's just uh, more orchestration. Like, it's just an instrumental oh. thing. Um, and that mm. was a little bit disappointing. I kind of wish Darren Chris had his own song. Uh, yes, I do. I need more Darren Chris. I need more information about this guy. Because, like, at the end of the episode, they're like, are you, like, from a another, like, <laughs> multiverse or something? And he's like, oh, you don't even <laughs> know where I'm from. And I just, I want to believe it's just Darren Chris. Um, <laughs> like, and he's just, he's just off, like, you know, going to different shows and characters and teach them about true love and communication <laughs> and and i want more maybe that's where he's been you know like darren chris mm-hmm. i feel like a few years ago he um said something very sweet and well-intentioned about like not wanting to take roles that were meant for queer actors because of mm-hmm. course like on glee he played a queer character and sort of like was continuing to be cast in those kind of roles Mm -hmm. yeah he did hedwig and then he disappeared (laughs) like once he said he wasn't doing queer roles anymore he didn't get cast in anything so maybe he's been doing this that said he's actually on broadway right now in um little shop i think with uh, oh that's fun so he's doing fine (laughs) i'm glad darren chris is doing fine he seems like a lovely man and he's very talented Mm -hmm. but it would explain his absence for the last few years if he's been running from multiverse to multiverse teaching people about love (laughs) through song that's probably (laughs) it that makes so much sense thank you that makes a lot of sense i love that for him (laughs) yeah (laughs) all right let's let's get to the scores Oh my god, sorry. I have one thing. And yeah, I just please. is this I, this is something where I was like is this a joke or am I just fixating? <laughs> um so John Barrowman's like I don't know what his character is in the real world, but in this world it's called his name is Cutter Moran. Like his last mm-hmm. name's Moran and his first name's Cutter because he has a knife. <laughs> is that a boat joke? Like a catamaran or is it just <laughs> stupid? <laughs> I don't see the payoff for that at any point. I kept waiting for him to be on a boat. I don't know if it's just like me being dumb or if that was a goof. I did look it up when that name came up because it sounded like something. And I was like, is this a DC villain? Is this a play on Merlin in some kind of way? Because that's his Arrow character. Um, And I didn't find anything at all. Wow, okay. Yeah. yeah. It's just a dumb name. <laughs> it just sounds like a boat. I was just annoyed Cutter that Moran. he was named a kind of... It's like having a guy walking around in a yacht. <laughs> like, fuck. Why? <laughs> yeah. Yo, did you talk to Yacht about that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, getting to the scores here, um, starting with general vibe. That's how much we enjoyed it, how, how it's aged, anything problematic, that good stuff. What are our thoughts here? I had a good time. I mean, like I said, I do think there are moments where it lags a bit. Like we go into the superhero stuff and that's not why I'm here. <laughs> I don't need to watch slow motion punches today, folks. Or the fast motion. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, but still, the general vibe for me was pretty high. There were like multiple moments where I was really excited. I thought the chemistry of Barry and Kara really carried a lot of this. Yeah, I, I thought this was pretty high. Yeah, certainly not anything problematic about it, too. I think it, you know, it's pretty recent, 2017, but uh, there are still a lot of shows in 2017 (laughs) that had problematic stuff. So, you know. Um, Yeah, yeah. I feel like um, the most exciting thing about the episode was just seeing how talented everyone was and how much fun they had with the silly characters. So I did really like that. Though for me, like... um, it uh do you guys like what's it called like a ruby goldberg machine or something mm-hmm. yeah ruby goldberg yeah goldberg yeah. there you go <laughs> ruby i don't know um <laughs> so ruby. Ruby, that's, ruby. Yeah, yeah. that's that's rube stage yeah. yeah yeah where um basically it's like you know a really complicated way to do something very simple and that mm-hmm. this episode felt like that like a little bit like you know from beginning to end okay they're back with their people And so um, I kind of, uh, because the plot wasn't like plotting as much as I would have liked it, um, Mm -hmm. I feel like my ranking, like I still really enjoyed it, but like maybe closer to like 6.5. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I I think I'm a little bit higher than that. I think I'm probably like an eight or a nine, Mm -hmm. but I totally get what you mean that like it, especially by the end of the episode, you kind of feel like, oh, what was the point? You know, like we kind of. Uh, have fallen backwards almost. Yeah, I totally 
I, I think it's a really good point. I mean, first of all, Ruby Goldberg, great drag <laughs> game for anyone who's looking for one. <laughs> really fantastic. Uh, <laughs> but no, I totally agree. I just wonder if those points for me are going to come in on writing. Because to me, oh, the writing true. does kind of fall apart. and do, But it does take away from the overall vibe. I feel good about like an eight or something like mm-hmm. that. Something that's high, but not perfect. I mean, I think there are real moments where this sort of is a bit lackluster. Um, so yeah, I think an eight kind of sounds good-ish. Yeah, yeah I think an eight sounds oh, good. I hear you. Cool. Maybe, yeah, maybe I'm closer to a seven. It was a lot of fun. Okay, I just wanted more. I'm actually, I'm actually very okay with this. Okay, yeah, so let's do yeah, yeah. Okay, let's do a seven. Oh, okay. Um, music. Uh, obviously, there's a bit of original music and a bit of found music, but we're talking also the arrangements, the harmonies, the melodies, all that kind of good stuff. Um, music's pretty high for me on this one. Totally, I think the use of found music is good. I mean, like we said, they're all sort of of an era. They're of a tone. Like they make sense together, even though they're from disparate properties. Rachel Bloom's song is really great. Super mm-hmm. Friend is a great song. There are moments where it's not as fantastic. I mean, like we said, the, the three dads belting on top of each other <laughs> kind of pushes the balance of listenability a <laughs> tiny bit. But our good friend, the music supervisor, did a really great job tying everything together. The arrangements are nice. Yeah. 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 I I agree. I feel like the only negative thing I can say is that I, they're just, I wanted more. I just wanted more mm-hmm. singing yep. more of the time. But yeah. Yeah. I agree with that too. And I, I think usually I would put found music a little bit lower than I would for original music. But... I think the arrangements are so complex and so mm-hmm. unique that it does feel like a like a good effort to make it fit this universe and to make everything cohesive together in a way that other shows don't. I'm looking at you, Grey's Anatomy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm feeling uh, I'm feeling kind of like an eight on this as well. Yeah, yeah, that feels good. Yeah, I'm good with an eight. All right, an eight. Uh, moving on to lyrics. I mean, you know, lyrics, but uh, we're looking at rhyme schemes. We're matching tone and characters to the show. And um, yeah, I mean, do the lyrics match the characters? Uh, a little tricky because in this one, we have mostly mostly made up characters, even within the context of the mm-hmm. show, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, lyrics... Um, is a little tricky when you're working mostly with found music. Basically, how well does the found music suit what's going on? And I think pretty well. Yeah, I think it was pretty appropriate. I think we got to give probably some points to uh, my Huckleberry friend, (laughs) because that's just an amazing find. Oh, that's yeah, Yeah. so funny. (laughs) It was very sweet. I think it's so easy for that to come off as really cringe, and I bet it did for a lot of people, but it worked for me. I love it. Yes, that kind of humor is so great. (laughs) Just like also the little wave, like, oh yeah, that's me. (laughs) (laughs) That little French fry of a man. He's so... He's so charming. Yeah. And then, of course, the lyrics for Super Friend are really great. I yes. mean, they're they're pithy. They're fun. And I thought the uh, the song with the dads, those lyrics seem to really suit mm-hmm. the tone of the moment and what they're trying to do and being supportive. Just three supportive dads. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like everything felt like really natural, like coming from each of the characters, you know, like that's. Yeah, I feel like that is what they would say and kind of how they would say it, you know. So totally yeah, good fit. I think maybe the only moment I don't know that Cutter Moran, who is apparently not a boat, um, <laughs> <laughs> as like a ruthless gangster, would really sing "Put a Little Love in Your Heart." But maybe I guess that is the music meister trying to just like get them to sing. So maybe he's just manipulating everyone into singing. But I, that did feel I was a bit like, isn't he mean? I, I could see it as like a little bit of like a campy gangster kind of thing, like you yeah, know, like like sure. older Batman villains in kind of a similar way. But I I hear what you're saying, 100. <laughs> percent I also think running home to you, those lyrics are maybe a little bit cheesy, but I think they totally fit. I yes, think they're, they they're totally nice. work. Yeah. yeah, I mean Barry's a cheese ball. He is. I He's don't actually. <laughs> it would be weird to me if he had like really really 
insightful lyrics about what it meant to be a lover. <laughs> um, <laughs> that would be out of character for Barry. He's just a nice boy. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Our favorite. <laughs> yeah, he's just a good boy. Capital yeah. G, capital B. <laughs> S- solid contender for white boy of the month. Mm-hmm. Uh, Honestly, month. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All time white boy of the month, that yes. one. <laughs> um, I'm kind of feeling the same as music. Uh, I don't know how y'all feel. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine with an eight. An eight yeah. sounds nice. Next is dancing. Pretty straightforward. The choreo, the difficulty. Uh, it's hard to not think of this as a ten, but I'm I'm curious what you guys think. Yeah, yeah, I feel again like more, so much more. I wish mm-hmm. it could have been, but yeah, I mm-hmm. mean like if not ten, nine point five, and that point five is because I just want more. Yeah. I actually really feel good about a 9.5 because I also, yeah, two songs have really great choreo. We've got Little Love in Your Heart and we've got Super Friends, right? Mm-hmm. And they're fantastic choreo. The other songs are a bit slower and maybe harder to do choreo yeah. for, but we do sort of do a lot of standing and singing at people mm-hmm. during those. <laughs> yeah, the choreo that was there was fantastic it was so good. and so fun. And I, yeah. feel like, and yeah. Yeah, I feel like they could have really like, done something really like a large scale thing that would have been like what is going on right now a hundred the whole world is dancing <laughs> you yeah know? when you set up a world that is a musical you're allowed to do things like that in a really exciting way and i think we we kind of got there with a little love in your heart but mm-hmm. then that's the only group choreo i mean then we've got a duet choreo but then you know so i'm feeling good about a 9.5 yeah, yeah i think that's good as well too uh yeah. i think the the hard thing to think about is in the context of the other episodes we've seen, this is like definitely more dancing than other episodes. Yeah. But I also, if you have Grant Gustin, make him dance more, you know? Yes. Exactly. They had the resources. <laughs> the resources were there. <laughs> Mr. Policeman, I gave you all the clues. <laughs> Um, the next one we have is uh, performances. This is vocal performance, acting performance. Um, this is interesting because I remember thinking, like, I, when I was watching this, I was like, I think everybody is acting better than I remember people on The Flash acting. Um, and maybe it's just that they get to do something different than they usually do that allowed it to be a little bit more fun and a little bit campy and different. But that was a nice little surprise for me personally. Yeah, yeah, I thought I thought the acting was fantastic. It's fun too, like doing really like campy sort of cheesy things, you know. I feel like it's really easy to sometimes lose the heart and the sincerity in it, but like they were just things th- things were so sincere and it was just so charming and yeah, they all everyone killed it. Yeah. I totally agree. I think that's such a good point to make. Like, I think everyone is doing camp, but not at the expense of genuine feeling mm-hmm. and emotion. I think that, you know, Kara and Barry are goofing around with each other, but when they need to bring that emotional punch, they really can. Yeah. And to me, that's also so, that's something that's just so mm-hmm. trained into musical theater actors. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. that, that duality of being super goofy and then singing the most serious song anyone's ever sung. But it's real. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> but it's real. Yeah. It's coming from, from somewhere earnest. And that really, you really felt that. I really, and of course, like, we talked about the vocal performances. If anything, maybe a bit too perfect yes. but that's mm-hmm. it's sort of a hard thing to dock them for really just doing their jobs too well <laughs> <laughs> and i think that like I, w- I would love to highlight a moment in super friends that i really liked where barry starts by singing and is like a little wavery with his voice and like less confident and then like a line later he's fully into it like i'm embracing that i'm singing a musical song now and i think that was a good, just a good choice as yes. an actor and and he did it well. Yeah, I really liked that. And I and I almost wish because like that was a nice kind of like a little less polished moment and it made sense with the character and that was really nice. I think Darren Chris does, you know, he like starts one of the songs like mm-hmm. a little a cappella and then it switches to like oh, like fully edited produced song, you know. And um yeah, you know, it's nice to to feel like things are like, oh, like it's it's a little less edited, maybe, you know, or 
But um, well, it feels more organic. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Like it's more like it builds the world in a kind of really fun way to be like, oh, we're all caught off guard by how we're singing. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And it's like, whoa, you you don't know what's gonna happen next, you know? Totally. Yeah, but that's like totally. also being super nitpicky. <laughs> Hey, that's that's why you're on this show. This is what we do. <laughs> we nitpick. Um, I kind of I kind of feel like a nine or nine point five on this one as well too. Yeah, I forgot the cat. Wait, what are we talking about? Um, <laughs> this is vocal, <laughs> vocal and acting performance. performance. Cool. Yeah, great. Yeah. Cool. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> um. Yeah, I like I like nine point five. I think. Like, I think we just want a little bit more, a little bit more, just a little bit, (laughs) not much. (laughs) Totally. Um, All right. Uh, Writing. And, you know, this is like dialogue, but it's also the pacing and the structure of the script. It's um, what's going on. I think this is actually where this episode is going to suffer for me Mm -hmm. personally. Like we kind of talked about, there's like a whole bank robbery thing that like kind of, (laughs) it feels like it's happening in order to give those characters something to do. Like that's Mm -hmm. sort of what it felt like is they're trying to put a B plot in, but it's just distracting and not needed. I really think you could have just stuck with the A plot in this episode if you kind of had the had the balls to do that, honestly. If they just stuck around in the music theater land and didn't do this weird fight and this weird bank robbery thing that felt really superfluous and <laughs> I think kind of took away um the pacing just like lagged. Mm-hmm. It didn't feel necessary to me and I didn't care for it. <laughs> yeah, and the thing that sucks for me is that I think individually like the dialogue was pretty good Mm -hmm. like i like the way they captured that universe well and there were a lot of jokes that i loved Mm -hmm. but i think overall it really does fall apart in the end and is confusing (laughs) um and not in like a fun way you know yeah it just gets confusing in a in a real way yeah (laughs) like you're like shot and then suddenly we're kissed and we're back in the real world and things just sort of we're like, okay, bye, friends. You know, we just sort of like wave goodbye. It felt like I wanted the stakes of the like music theater world were set and we had to see that plot through. And it felt like instead we got saved out of the plot. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas what I really wanted was for them to finish the the show that yes. they were doing. And it felt like Iris and um, Kara's paramour uh interrupted us like i was like ah don't come here ah i don't want you here (laughs) no don't do this right now i need to i need to like i wanted that catharsis for that storyline and Mm -hmm. instead it just feels like the ending is that they all hate each other which kind of sucks you know yeah yeah No. no i i totally agree with with everything you guys have both said yeah, I think, um, you know, my ideal musical theater episode would be one where they didn't have to try so hard to come up with a plot to justify why everyone is singing. Because, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. uh, you know, it feels like um, just the whole thing, just back to Ruby Goldberg, you know, um, <laughs> it just um, it felt like there were just like so many... Um, uh, it just felt like a little like contrived in some ways, you know. Totally, but that's also like part of like what makes it like funny. Like I do enjoy that. Like it's yeah. silly and this and that, um, and that is fun. But yeah, yeah, I don't know. Um, no, I think you're really hitting on something for me, which is that the I am okay with you contriving the goofiest ass reason that we are now doing a musical. You just have to then be okay with it. Yes. Um, have or have like then, rules that make sense yeah, for it. You have to then continue to buy in. And I think that sometimes by trying to be like, oh, don't worry, this is still a superhero exactly. show. We're still going to use our mm-hmm. powers to punch each other. Mm-hmm. Kind of just takes away from it for me. Yes. Um, yes. Like I wish they yeah. had committed more to being fully musical theater, you know? Mm-hmm. And we have a whole category for that, too. We do. Oh, That's wow. fair. Okay. But I do think it's, it shows in the writing sometimes. I yes, think these, no, these, sept- these two categories tend to sort of turn into... Uh, mm-hmm. There's a symbiosis <laughs> there. But yeah, I, I think the writing for me, even if individual dialogue moments are good, the overall structure is not. Mm-hmm. Is sort of the end, uh, the end of that. So I'm kind of thinking more to like a 
five. Yeah, yeah five sounds right to me. Yeah, because I, okay. I feel like I was really enjoying individual characters. I was enjoying everyone's talent. But I was like not excited at, or as excited about like what's going to happen in the story. You know, mm-hmm. like, oh, my gosh, like oh, that just happened. Whoa. Like, how is this going to end? How is it going to resolve? And there was like not really a ton of that for me. I was just kind of enjoying things as they came. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. Totally. As, as a side note, I just keep picturing a drag queen with marbles <laughs> that are like, you know, kind of sliding out and hitting blocks Hot on their dress. Uh, it's all yeah. It could be such a good show, though. Like, yeah. imagine if, like, you know, a very her, technical show. A very technical show, but imagine if, like, that Ruby Goldberg, like, the marble hits something, and we do like a reveal, and it reveals like a new a new wig. wig. <laughs> yeah, that's incredible. <laughs> this could be a great show. <laughs> we need we need some engineers. Yes. <laughs> um, next category is direction. This is going to be you know how things are shot, framed, all that kind of good stuff. I actually, I think the direction for me is okay. I I didn't say this before, but the running home to you bit, I just wish that whole scene was lit so much better than it was. Mm. It was it was so weird. You also just way. hate things being at night. Yes, <laughs> I really do. I don't like it. <laughs> this is The Flash. This is a comic book musical episode. Why are we f- shooting in blacks and grays? That's bad. It's a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, I, I would have... I could have done with a little more light also on on their faces. Like these are important emotional moments. Mm -hmm. It feels like we're doing this in the dark. It's also just weird to me, honestly, on TV shows when people walk into rooms and don't turn lights on. Like who does that? Mm -hmm. I know, I know. Especially like, okay, I feel like, because I feel like there's different kinds of people and like some people really like to not have a ton of lights on this and that. Like, oh, it's calm lighting. But um, gosh, especially for me, like when I go to the kitchen, I just really, I really like, all the lights on. I want to be able to like see my food and see what I'm cooking. And like yeah. 100%. people that I live with, they're like, whoa, you have so many lights on. They walk into the kitchen. They're like, ah, I'm like, I'm just trying to <laughs> see. Okay. And like, see, I'm, I'm not yeah. like, a, I'm not like a big light girly. Yeah. Like I won't turn on the big light, but I'll turn it on in order to go get my little lamps on <laughs> my little <laughs> mood lighting. Yeah. And that, but like, I don't just live in the dark. That's yeah. crazy. <laughs> Totally. Yeah. <laughs> it was very odd to me that we're like, oh, welcome home to our apartment. It's very <laughs> dark in here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I think generally, too, I think this show as an action show suffers from like the too many cuts all the time uh, syndrome that uh, annoys me a little bit. Um, but uh, it didn't bother me so much in this episode. It just was noticeable, which I think is not necessarily a good thing. Yeah, and I, I really just loved the put a little love in your heart whole yes. number. Mm-hmm. Loved how everything looked. Everything was like golden and old timey. It was cute. We're like moving the camera around, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Like we've got a mobile camera, which is such an old school movie musical thing. And yeah, I just wish there'd been a little bit more of that yeah. in other scenes. Mm-hmm. But yeah, for me, direction is not necessarily giving me anything, but it's not necessarily taking that much away. It's very middling. Mm-hmm. This is mm-hmm. extremely mid directing performance. Yeah. Um, Maybe like a six. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's like yeah. a little bit positive, but it's not better a lot than of it, it is. Yeah, it's more positive than it is totally. negative, but it's not yeah. by a lot. <laughs> All right, commitment. This is the big one. I mean, like, how much they commit to the concept of the musical. How many songs are there? And we've kind of touched on this. We wish there was more commitment. Especially Mm -hmm. with the level of talent. Especially with just how unbelievably talented your cast is. It's interesting, too, because I think there is commitment in some ways and not in others. Mm -hmm. Like, they got Rachel Bloom. They got Pasek and Paul. Like, they got big name people in this episode. They also crossed over two television shows. Yeah, so they ambitious. like really wanted to make this happen. So they committed in the production sense of it, but then I wish they maybe did a bit more. You did all this work, like just add maybe one more original song. I think even just one more would do so much. Yeah. Totally. I totally agree. It felt really weird because it felt like the ideation of this was so committed. They're like, great, we'll make it a crossover because Melissa Benoist can also sing. We'll bring Supergirl in. 
we'll do an original song, we'll do some found music. And then it felt like at the last second, someone was like, but what if nobody punches someone else? <laughs> and I'm just really mad at that one exec. Who yeah, says, or like, no, cut Darren a song. just has to rob a bank. And I'm like, why? Like, why are we doing this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I totally, I totally agree. Yeah, there was just like, there was just a, the last minute reluctance to let go of superhero action that I think was really detrimental to the final product. Mm -hmm. But that said, I mean, yeah, we do have a lot of commitment in terms of original music was made mm -hmm. and we brought in two entire shows <laughs> to this one show. And the arrangements as well, too, I think are That's really true. good. Like, I really can't emphasize that enough. I think it is on another level than most of the shows we've watched so far. Yeah. Yeah. And then it was totally. like singing and dancing, you know? Yeah. And dancing. Yeah. More dancing than usual. Yeah. How does a 7.5 feel? That feels eight? good. Yeah, that feels good. 7.5? Yeah. Okay. And then our next category is stakes. So is this like... What are the stakes for the characters and their arcs? Can you skip this episode? I think, honestly, this is where it gains back some of those points for me. I mm -hmm. think by being a pivotal episode for two entire shows, the stakes of this are raised a lot. Um, they can, if they die in the musical, they die in real life. <laughs> oh, I forgot. Yes. Uh, a joke Fort that mine. always gets me. <laughs> like, uh, um, Jumanji rules. <laughs> yeah. You die in the game, you totally. die in real Matrix life. Matrix rules. Yeah. yeah. Matrix rules, all of those things. And yeah, it felt pretty important for their arcs, uh, their romantic arcs specifically, but this is an episode about love. So, you know, Iris and Barry get back together. They um, he proposes. He proposes. That seems pretty yeah. big. And Supergirl probably forgives that guy. We don't really see the <laughs> conclusion. <of that. laughs> but, um, the stakes did feel pretty high to me consistently. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. I think you hit on everything I would say there, too. Yeah, yeah. I think um, I feel like the only thing I could say is that, like, I was not worried about things not working out. Yes. Ever. I think that's, that's true. a really good point. Yeah. So, yeah, even when they're both point. shot, like you're like, well, oh, no, they're gonna get out of this. <laughs> exactly. So, like, so, yeah. yes, tech technically, for sure, high stakes, like big emotional things accomplished. But I I never was in doubt, you know, there's no tension. Yeah. <laughs> Which does play into stakes. Even if the stakes are high, I'm never actively worried exactly. about anyone. Yeah, like, like everyone's going to yeah. be fine. Look at them tap dance. Yeah, they could die, but I know they won't. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, how about a nine? How are we feeling about a nine? Yeah, a nine a seems nine. good to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then our last and possibly most important category um, this will be interesting. <laughs> yeah, this will be interesting. So this is the personal ranking. I mean, this is just your individual overall ranking for the show as a musical episode. And then we'll average all of our scores. Mm -hmm. We'll have to do some math. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I have my number. So uh, on the count of three, I'm wait, ready wait. to... So just like overall? <laughs> overall, holistic. Overall. Zero to ten. pick a number. Slap a zero number to ten. It. Slap a number oh on Oh, my gosh. Episode. <laughs> okay okay it's the most demanding <gasps> category of the category and it's okay liza and i split all the time on these so it doesn't We're matter almost if... never agree on these. yeah <laughs> okay i have my number <laughs> <laughs> the gravity <laughs> we're theater people i appreciate yeah. how seriously you're taking this <laughs> All right, um, on three? Sure. Okay. <laughs> okay, one, two, three, eight. Nine. Seven. Whoa! Eight. That's perfect. I love perfect. that. Cute. That was so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely phenomenal team. Easy. <laughs> All right. So that gives it an eight. Whoa. Perfect, perfect. Talia, thank you so much for being in this episode. This is such a fun time. Yeah, this is great. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Where can our lovely listeners find you? Yes, uh, you can find me on Instagram and TikTok. It's at Talia.Sindel, I think, on Instagram and at Talia Sindel on TikTok. Yeah. And you can also stream <laughs> Epic the Cersei Saga on all of the platforms. 
Yeah, definitely listen to it. I mean, yeah, you do, do crazy that. work on that. It's <laughs> insane. The numbers you guys are doing are crazy Thank too. You. I'm so happy for y'all. It's exciting. Yeah, it's an extremely, it's an extremely fun list. <laughs> we could not recommend it highly enough. Oh, thank you guys. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so that gives the duet a total score of 77.5, making it a really close race in kind of the top five there. It puts it in fifth place right uh, behind Scrubs is My Musical and right in front of Futurama's The Devil's Hands Are Idle Playthings. Yeah, and that feels right to me. I think this was a really solid, really enjoyable thing. Um, not perfect by any means, Mm -hmm. but super fun. Super, super fun. (laughs) Super fun with our super friends. (laughs) (laughs) Next week, we'll see you once more with season three, episode 21 of Allie McBeal entitled The Musical Almost. You can find this episode on Disney+. Plus. Thank you to Olivia Braslowski, our angelic audio architect, and to Sakana Powell, our magnificent marketing maven. If you like this show, please be sure to rate and review us. If you don't, keep it to yourself. You can find us on Instagram at Once More With TV or contact us using the information in the show notes. And, and scene. scene. <laughs>